And joining us now is uh, Danny Olivas. He's a former NASA astronaut, five-time spacewalker, American hero here uh, in the studio, in the flesh. Danny, thank you so much for being with us. Um, we've got my model here. I, I do love playing with this, love playing with it even more with an astronaut. This part right here, this part came down, landed perfectly, uh, incredible. All of our jaws just dropped again. This part's up in space. I'll, I'll hand this to you. Sure. But when it comes to attitude and, like, maybe the loss of, a, of an engine, what, what happened then? Well, you know, I was looking at the tele telemetry just like everyone else was uh, on, on, the, uh, on the reporting, and there are six engines that run in the back. And what we noticed was that by the time we were starting to lose attitude control, only two of the engines were firing, two of the larger engines. And so uh, with two engines, it's just really tough to maintain uh, attitude control. And you could see the, the little graphics on the bottom mm -hmm. uh, indicating that it was essentially, you know, losing control. You could see the video uh, that was being downlinked as well. Clearly, it didn't have a nice you know, a level straight flight. Uh, this was an important mission, you know, to be able to test out some of the heat shields. Uh, they had some modifications on Starship uh, to try to help feather some of that, the heating, uh, and uh, hopefully not have have issues. Remind people how how it's supposed to, like how the heat shields and how it's supposed to bleed off sure. uh, some of the speed, because that's one of the most remarkable things about this whole Yeah, so entering into the Earth's atmosphere is, is a tough thing. You're trying to dissipate all that energy that you, that you took going up, you know, being able to come back and kind of make a nice soft landing someplace on Earth. And so uh, half a starship is covered with a heat shield. And they were trying out different types of heat shield. They had a, a metallic type of heat shield that they were looking at. They were looking at one that was water-cooled. You know, I'll, I'll caution that, you know, right now our expectations on, on starship, and you mentioned Athena and intuitive machines, I mean, this is a development phase. Uh, we are in a development cycle right now that we're seeing. So uh, this, this is not operational. The starship is not operational yet. Falcon 9 is. Is. That's why we feel comfortable launching astronauts in it and cargo to the International Space Station. Uh, but Starship is still going through some development, and um, yeah, it, uh, it's, it's going to take some time. And if, if I may, if, if, if Starship is supposed to be coming down like this, kind of keeping this attitude, if something starts to spin, like, is there a way eventually to stop that? Or once it starts spinning with the atmosphere right there and it starts dropping, like, what, what happened? Is that the reason why we're seeing, like, these Armageddon-like breakups over the Caribbean? Well, and, and we have to take a look at exactly when this happened and what happened. Now, the, we do know is from the previous launch that they had some uh, structural issues associated with the propellant system. This may or may not be related to that. Uh, we do know that there, were, there was a loss of uh, engines, so... You know, it, it's possible that there were some similar uh, instances. We have to just wait until they, they do their investigation to really find out what the hardware issues were. All but by the FBA and, and possibly SpaceX, hopefully we'll, we'll get some answers. But it does seem very similar to what we saw last month. Meanwhile, um, you know, we haven't really heard from Athena. We, we know that there was a touchdown, possibly, but uh, there was some contact, and then it went dark as well. What's what's going on there? Well, so uh, during the landing of Athena, you remember uh, last year, uh, uh, IM-1 landed and, you know, basically uh, fell over. And so there was concerns about... Uh, this landing and being able to land upright. Uh, the data looked really good coming down. We heard from uh, Tim Crane, the, uh, the, the, the lead on this whole flight, um, that the, the LIDAR system was uh, giving them kind of some excursions coming down. And if you can think about that, LIDAR system is basically the radar altimeter, and it's basically telling you how far you are away from the ground. And if it's really noisy, you know, and, and you shut off the engines too early, you're still too high, and you could fall down hard. Or if you, you know, continue burning and... Um, you actually kind of drive yourself into the ground, you know, that's a bad day as well. Now, we don't know anything yet. What we do know is that they have made contact with the ship. They're able to communicate with it. They're able to get data from it. Now they're trying to do an assessment of the health, look at the power, look at the thermal, you know, look at the communication system and try to figure out, you know, what their best options are for, for salvaging the science from that mission right now. Got it. it. Meanwhile, I mean, Europe's got a new military satellite. It is crazy. We're seeing so many launches yeah. in one single day. And I don't even think it's it's over, right? SpaceX might have another launch uh, a little bit later tonight, if I understand. Uh, uh, yeah. And so, so when it comes to Europe and, and this 
spy satellite that, that, that's up there. What, what's the significance here? Well, I think one of the most significant things of it is it, it's, it's, a, it's a successful launch of Ariane 6. Uh, this now gives launch capabilities to the European continent mm -hmm. uh, through, through the French uh, you know, uh, Ariane 6 launch vehicle. Uh, I heard as recently as today is they're talking about not only going from five launches a year, but maybe even upping that up to like 12 launches per year. Different design than, than, uh, than SpaceX, different philosophy altogether. Um, but it's really trying to help uh, increase launch capability Abilities uh, for the independent organizations, as you know, with everything that's been going on with Russia, uh, the the ability to use the, uh, the the Soyuz or proton mm -hmm. rocket systems is obviously been uh, severely curtailed for, for the Europeans. So that independence is really good for them. And then you know the French obviously get the, the constellation of three uh, military satellites uh, up in orbit. A lot of stairways to heaven these days. Yeah, Danny, absolutely. Thank you so much for joining us. Fascinating stuff. Thank, thank you very much. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.